from malware. Welcome, welcome, viruses. welcome. Can everybody hear me okay? Program. Testing one, two, three. You guys scared me. I thought you were leaving. You're just getting closer. I appreciate that. Uh, this is a brief session on managing Chromebooks. Whoa. <laughs> brief session on managing Chromebooks with the administrative console. Let me come back. I just logged into this Google account, so now it's trying to add all my plugins for me. My name is Dr. Roland Rios. I'm the Director of Technology for the Fort Sam Houston School District right here in beautiful San Antonio, Texas. Welcome to my fair city. I wish we had an NBA championship team to deliver to you. Oh, we were so close, so close. This is going to be a quick introduction. How many of you have Chromebooks in your schools right now? Super. So some of you, this is going to be review. Others, it may be a little new. This graphic is completely over my name. Uh, but as I said, I'm the Director of Technology for a school district here. We're a small school district. We've got a small high school. We've got about 450 students, and we started a one-to-one -one program with them this year. So all of my high school students have a Chromebook, and managing them is, is super easy. There's a lot of devices that people are putting out into schools right now. Some of them are easily managed. Others are not as easily managed. Let me just say that, right? Some required ingredients, and some of this is common sense. First, you have to have a Google Apps for Education domain. Misspelling, I apologize. You have to have access to your administrative console. So if you're, you know, someone else has charge of that, but you need to be able to control the Chromebooks, have them give you some administrative rights inside that console to do that. Third thing, of course, you have to have Chromebooks. Okay, if you're going to manage the Chromebooks, you have to have the Chromebooks to manage. You do have to have a pre-installed version of the Chrome OS on them. As some of you may know, you can grab a regular laptop and put the Chrome operating system on them. Those cannot be added to the management console. They've got to be purchased official Chrome operating system machines. And then you have to a purchase the optional management on each device. Those are a, a $30 a device, but it's for the lifetime of the device. We buy all of ours from a third-party vendor. We buy our management uh, on, on, the, on top of that. And when they come, the um, machines are already listed, and all we have to do is enroll them. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we go along. But once you have all this, you're going to have the ability to, ma to manage those devices. And there's four major areas where you manage the devices. I'm just going to talk about them real quick, and then we're just going to go straight live to my administrative console, and I'll show you that. First major area is proxy access and URL management. You're, ab you're able to block websites on these devices. Not only are they blocked on your filter, perhaps, but then you can block them through the Chromebook management. If you block Facebook on the Chromebook, the kids can't get to, to Facebook no matter where they are or what proxy they're going through, not even if they're at home. Okay? As soon as I did that, I became a very unpopular man on my campus, but too bad. Okay? There's applications that you can push, push out, extensions that you can push, push out, and the management tool makes it extremely easy to do that. There's some security features as well. And then there's some hardware features as well. And I'm going to show you all four of those main areas. Right now, at last count, there was 110 different policies that you could manage, 110 different choices you have to make on these devices. It, it started with only 30, and it's growing each and every day. Now, I'll be honest. I'm going to go over this with you live. I haven't looked at mine in a while because it's one of those at the beginning of the year. You look at all the management policies. You decide, what am I going to allow? What am I going to block? How am I going to tweak this? And you pretty much set it and forget it until something happens. And your high school principal comes and says, this is happening. Can we manage it? Can we lock it down? Can we do something like that? Uh, and so you can always go back and visit that. Uh, this is a website. This is a Google site. It's nothing I put together, but I created a Google shortcut for you. Uh, and this page here. Any question you have about the management console of the devices themselves, you can find on this. In fact, when I was putting this presentation together, I went back and looked at this quite often. Uh, but that'll take you to the Google website that has all the information that you might need. I know I'm talking real quickly here, folks, and I apologize. We're a little behind schedule. I'm trying to get us caught up. All right, so I'm going to get out of this. And I'm going to go to my administrative console. This is my live administrative console for my Google Apps domain in my school okay, that I have control over. And there's a couple of ways to get to the Chromebook management area. One of them, right here under your Google Apps, says Chrome Management. So I can click on this, and it takes me straight to my... I'm trying to speed things up. Obviously, my internet connection is not trying to speed things up. Let's try getting to it a different way. Come on.
There it is. Now, one of the nice things about it is that as you manage all these different things, I said there was 110 different things that you could manage. You can manage them by group. So even though you might want to lock down part of your Chromebook for one set of users, you don't have to do it for all of them. So if I want to block a certain URL, I could do that mainly just for the middle school kids, maybe just for the high school kids while I'm still allowing it for my teachers. Give me one second here. So right now, here's my user settings. These are all the different subgroups that I have in my domain. And this is being very persnickety. I do apologize, folks. I'm missing a sidebar over here, and I don't know why. I'm trying to scroll down to show you the different settings that fall under this, and I can only see this little bar here for some reason. This is what happens when you rush, folks. Ah. Anybody ever had this problem before? I'm not getting a scroll bar over here to see the rest of my page. Is there anybody from Google here? See if I can see any of these. I may have to, I'm, tr I'm trying to get to, let's see, I'm not, it's very odd, yes. I don't think there is a yeah, all my user settings are down here. My device settings, I'm not seeing any of them. There should be a whole bunch of device settings down here. Ah, uh, look, they're. See, they're here. It's, I think it's the resolution settings because of the... Um, yeah. Erg. There's nothing there to scroll down. Let me see if I can move this up a little more. Where? Ah. The uh, trouble we're having is that we're mirroring the display, and so it's lost my ability to scroll down there and show you all the different options. Trust me, if you could see them, you would be amazed right now, okay? So I'm not seeing any of these user settings down here. Is there any way to change the mirroring? No. We, can't, nope. we can't do an extended screen? That wouldn't... You could, yeah. Let's see if that would help. Let's see if this helps any... Where are we here? This one... Looky here. Now let me see if I can throw this one. All right, this is going to be really hard for me to do. <laughs> but it could be doable. Ah! Here we go. Let's do this. I feel like a weatherman now where he's got to, like, look this way and do that. So um, I wonder if I can. All right, now I'm really getting. All right, so now we see our user settings. Uh, we've got a refresh policy. How many times is this going to update? Okay, you got to be careful with this one here. Do it as often as possible. I had the mistake of putting that really long, and then when I would change a setting, it wouldn't refresh on the student's machines. So I set that time a whole lot shorter. Can you? Okay. Now we got a Vanna White. This is great. Um, all kinds of different things. Can you, do you want to allow different extensions, different themes, different um, scripts and hosts? This is the part that I love. There are different devices, I'm not going to mention any of them by name, okay, that if you try to push an app out, you have to physically touch every single machine to make sure that app is on there, okay? I didn't mention which device, I, uh, I didn't do it, I didn't, okay? But if we go to Manage Pre-Installed Apps, I can go to the Chrome Web Store. Uh, I'm going to do a search, I'm going to look for, um, let's look for Desmos, D-E, or Dictionary. We're just going to search for it. It's going to find all the apps we want. I just click on Add. Okay, if I wanted to at this point, I could hit Save. We're not going to right now. As soon as I do that, that app is on everybody's machine. I never have to touch them physically. It pushes out the apps that quickly. I can do the same thing with blocking apps as well. Okay, the extensions, the little plugins that sit at the top of your browser, I can add those, take those off. 
Uh, if I want them pinned, these are pinned applications down here, kind of like your favorites bar. I can actually, once I install an app, have it pinned to the bar. Now, if you do this, it's good practice to somehow get notification out to the kids because they may not know it's there. I found a great graphing calculator app called Desmos. I sent them all an email that says, you now have this tool at your disposal. It's on your machines. Be sure you check it out and use it. Otherwise, sometimes they forget that it might be there. Okay? You can tell it what page you want it to start on. Do you want it to start on your district page every time? Maybe their campus page every time. You can force that in there. As soon as you set it, it's good to go. Okay? Well, uh, if you want a screen lock, right now I've got this allowing the user to configure. I'm going to change that. Okay, too many kids are staying logged in and then forgetting about it. I want them logged out, and, I, and they can lock the screen where they have to re-enter their uh, password to get back in. Uh, if there are any malicious sites, all kinds of stuff on here. Here's one. If you want to set the proxy so that they're always going through your filter, you can do that. So even if they're at home on their wireless, the first thing it's going to do is come to your filter, then go out to the Internet. All right? That's your decision whether you want to do it that way or not. Um, all kinds of things to do. You can add extra pages on the startup. So you've got a home screen. You can have different tabs that will start up automatically. Uh, let's keep going down. You can turn on and off safe search. We've got tons of them here, guys. I'm going really quickly through them now. Let's jump now real quick to the device settings. Third tab over on the top. No, no, we're going to stay in that screen. I'm sorry. My apologies. Oh, yeah, this is, yeah. No, go back to... Um, Go back to where we were under settings. Yep. And then on the left, we're going to go to Chrome management. But then right here, we're going to go to device settings. There we go. Okay. If you automatically enroll the devices, guys, this is, how, this is what I love about the Chromebooks. All I've got to do when they come in, I hook them up to the wireless because I don't want to give that wireless password out to my kids, and I'm done. All I've got to do then is hand it out to the kid. As soon as they log in, to their Google account because I have them set to automatically enroll. It automatically enrolls that Chromebook, and I have control of it. Okay? it. They are so easy to get up, get running, and get out of the box. Do you want them to allow a guest mode? If you do, you say yes. If not, you don't put that on there. And then you can sign in restricted. Right now I have it open, but during the school year, I put a wild card in there. I've got a domain, our school domain for Google is at fsh.echalk.com. That's just our domain that I use for Google. So what I put in here is who can sign in. I put an asterisk, asterisk one of the little stars, um, at fsh.echalk.com, which meant the only way you could get onto this Chromebook is with a school-issued Google Apps domain. They couldn't log in using their private Google domain. Mom and Dad couldn't get on, anything like that. So I can restrict it there, too. Okay? Do you want all the local data erased? You can tell them what you want on the sign-in screen. If you don't want their picture there, you can turn all of that off. There are so many settings, it's unbelievable. And I know I'm going through them really, really quickly. Uh, do you want them to be able to, to pull down a release channel of the operating system? If you want them on a stable channel, you leave it alone. Leave it there, okay? Uh, let's go down, go down. You can set their time zone. Oh, and that's it. Uh, go to uh, shipments. Sa same tab, same tab. Just change the, there we go. You're doing great. Thank you very much. Okay, this is where you can see each and every device you have. When's the last time it logged in? You can see when you bought it, who shipped it. You've got all of this information at your disposal. Now I go to networks. Oh, I, I haven't set up any networks. You can add your own wireless networks in here. So you can add the name of your SSID. You can put in the password and everything, and it could pick that up automatically. The reason mine is blank is I haven't done that step yet. Okay, guys, I apologize. I know I rushed that really, really fast, but I wanted you to see, just go back to that first one, the user settings. Just the, the amount of control you have over the, these devices is staggering. I mean, it's so much so that the first couple of weeks I was going back changing a bunch of stuff because I kept forgetting, ooh, I, I should have locked that in. I should have done that. Now that I've been through it a year, I know exactly the way I want them to look. I set it once. I set it and forget it. You're in great shape. Um, and so are there any questions? Yes, sir. The cost, it, once you buy the Chromebook, it's $30 a device, and that's for the life of the device. So once you pay it once, then you can, you can have control over that Chromebook for as long as you own it. 